Oh, hi everyone. This is Dr. Iris. Hello. Welcome to this live broadcast. Today, I'll be discussing with you our special topic, which is how to start the low-carb and intermittent fasting lifestyle. So this is being broadcasted in a few different platforms. So I will have to speak to you in English today because we have an international audience. Although this is being broadcasted in the Filipino Success Movement platform, Filipino-Canadian organization platform, Global TV. It's also being broadcasted in our wellness community, which is more uh, international. It has an international audience base, so I will have to speak to you in English today. So I'm very, very happy to start this session about uh, low-carb and intermittent fasting lifestyle because I firmly be believe that this is something that will help address root cause um, of diseases. It's more geared on preventative medicine, which is really what uh, I'm passionate uh, about. And because I feel like if we address the uh, root cause, if we address more of the preventative aspects of disease, we actually won't get to the point where we'll need medications. So in today's discussion, there are a few things First of all, I'll give you a bit of an introduction on uh, low carb, uh, the, the meaning of low carb uh, lifestyle, and we'll delve into intermittent fasting and how you will safely combine the two. So this is a first broadcast, it's a primer. And so stay tuned because we'll be having more of these uh, broadcasts as you have more questions uh, to ask for sure. I've been getting a lot of questions already in the FSM, uh, sorry, in the Level Up Wellness community. If you're not part of that community yet, please do join our community because there you'll see uh, very inspiring postings from other members uh, about the food they eat and how they're doing with their fasting. We also have some postings about stress and um, exercises. So let's dive into it. If you've been following me for a while, you've seen some of my videos about uh, weight loss, weight management, and I always talk about this particular important hormone. So it's very important to get to know this hormone. So we have talked about insulin, we call him boss insulin because in terms of metabolism, insulin is the big boss, right? It's the main determinant of uh, how we utilize glucose. So just in case some of you are very new to this concept, let me just uh, clarify a few things. The body uses a few different fuels for our cells to function. So the most common fuel is glucose that comes from food and mainly food like carbs. Proteins and um, fat can also stimulate uh, insulin, but not so much because uh, they're more like alternative fuel type sources. So glucose is the main fuel that's being used by our body. Um, it is usually coming from carbs. So complex carbs, simple carbs, complex carbs are things like uh, grains, you know, oatmeal, rice, potatoes, and we have the simple carbs, which are the simple sugars, the thing that you find in the supermarket. So things like soft drinks and juices, candies, you know, the things that you find in anything that has an added sweetener usually comes in a few different names. Sometimes they call it a uh, high fructose kind of sweetener. Um, there are also uh, what we call like artificial sweeteners. So, so these things, um, although the artificial sweeteners will not cause an increase in, in the glucose as much, but still it will continue to lead to sugar addiction if you already have it. And most people have it without even knowing. So this is the basic, the basic thing to know about glucose metabolism. Okay, so we have the big boss. So insulin is the big boss here. And insulin tells the cell, okay, you have to let glucose in and you'll have to use glucose. And as I've mentioned earlier, the three macronutrients, so the three main macronutrients, which are your carbs, your fat, and your protein, all stimulate insulin production, but not equally. 
So what do I mean by that? Let's have a look at this graph here. So here in this graph, you'll see a comparison between, so this is from Diet Doctor, and this is showing the effect on insulin. So uh, before we get, get in deeper into this, remember that the reason why we don't want so much insulin uh, in our bodies, like acting up all the time, is because of the simple fact. So the more insulin stimulation you get, the more fat product production happens. Okay, so the more you stimulate the insulin, because it's the main regulator of fat deposition in the body, so the way that your body makes fat, then it follows that, so the more active it is, the more fat you make. And so if you look at this graph here with the different types of uh, nutrients and their effect on insulin, you'll see here that carbs, look at these spikes here of the carbs, carbs will usually make insulin go high. So you see the arrow here, it says higher insulin. And so you see it, it stimulates it more. And obviously what will happen, it makes it more easier for fat deposition to occur. If you compare it to the, these lower two things here, which are proteins and fat, you see that it stimulates it less, right? And so the things that increase insulin are high carbohydrate diet, a high calorie diet, frequent meals, right? Frequent meals. So eating more than the usual, you know, the common thing is to eat like three times a day. That's the most common notion. But a lot of people will actually have extra meals in the form of snacks, right? So it can be a morning snack, it can be an afternoon snack, even a midnight snack. So that will put you into three or sorry, six six eating times and every time you eat and most especially if you're eating something very carby something sugary which is usually what happens most of the time as a lot of people are eating in kind of like a um, coping coping um, mechanism way right like you're coping with stress you're coping with boredom you're coping with insomnia by eating then you tend to eat more sweets. So sweets, carby things, things that make you addicted. No one will like end up feeling addicted to broccoli, right? So usually what do you, do you eat in these time frames when you are feeling um, down, when you're feeling like stressed out, you're not gonna reach for, for cucumbers and broccoli. And usually you'll get the ice cream, you get the chips, you get the pizza, right, or noodles, or whatever, you know, um, cultural uh, carby thing that you may have. It's different for different people. So usually that's what happens. And so going back to this graph, if you're eating more carbohydrates, then you're stimulating insulin more. And so this thing happens a lot, right? And so you wonder, like time's passing by and you continue to build more fat it looks like as your age increases your fat levels also increase right like people give the excuse oh it's because i gave birth oh yeah because my metabolism slowing down right it in some ways it is because if you are usually not moving then your metabolic rate is pretty low which is what commonly happens in our society a lot of people are sedentary right people don't really move regularly, people don't exercise. So we get into this mode of fat deposition more. Fewer movement, more carbs, then equals more fat deposition. And so it's really important to, to understand this concept. And doing so will help you understand the science behind why we advocate for low carb and fasting uh, as evidence-based strategies for losing weight, right? Because if you look at this, you will see that, uh, look at this, if you are like restricting your carbs, for example, which is the green part, carb restriction, then what happens is you don't really stimulate insulin, right? There, there's no more stimulant insulation, uh, sorry, it's stimulation of insulin. And so what happens is you start to 
mobilize your other fat stores. So as you can see here, these are the things that can decrease insulin production, low carbohydrate diet, a low calorie diet, meals that are consolidated. So meaning you're not, not uh, snacking so many times a day. Instead of doing your six meals, you're eating in a shorter period of time. And this is where the premise of intermittent fasting comes in because if you are intermittent, you're in an intermittent fasting schedule, you usually tend to have a longer fasting time and you consolidate your meals in a shorter period of time. And so looking at this graph again, you continue to, if you're not eating, if you're fasting, you're continuing to burn your excess fuel. So the other things that can, of course, decrease insulin are high intensity exercise, because now you are trying to mobilize your, your fuel from other sources while you're exercising. Because when you're exercising, what happens is you need those extra fuel, right, to, to give to your muscles or, which are working hard during the exercise. And so where, where are they going to take those energy? So it's going to come from the fat. It won't come from the fat if you continue to load up. Like I see this a lot. Uh, a lot of people would work in the gym, really like do an intense workout. And then when they go home, what are they going to eat? Pizza going to eat pizza, burger, french fries. So it really like defeats the purpose because then you were trying to lower your insulin, but then after your workout, you're then going to stimulate insulin. And so I get this question a lot. Like if I'm fasting, uh, doctor, then is it okay that I'm having my, you know, cheat days, my carbs right after my fast? Well, the simple answer is it, it shouldn't be that way right? Because you're defeating the purpose of what you're doing. If you, not to say that you cannot eat carbs, there are a few different carbs, which we'll be talking about later, but uh, really choosing your carbs wisely, carbs that will not stimulate the insulin so much and will not cause these spikes. So like here, you can see those spikes, right? The traditional three meals a day in a period of, let's say, 12 hours eating, so you see the red thing here, it, it's showing you the spikes in insulin. So every time you eat, like the, your three meals a day, you're stimulating insulin, you give very little chance for the body to burn, to burn the fat, to burn the excess fuel. The green parts here are your excess fuel. And guess what? In more recent times, how long are people sleeping? people are staying up later and later because of electronic devices, right? The blue light that comes from electronics is very stimulating. And a lot of people will go to bed, you know, looking at their cell phones, scrolling. And so what happens is instead of falling asleep right away, you get stimulated. So when you're stimulated, you can't sleep. When you cannot sleep, what do you do? You maybe watch TV, and when you watch TV, what do you do? You, you eat, right? Or sometimes, some people don't even watch TV anymore. They just go ahead and snack, right? So midnight snack. And it's all coming from the insomnia, right? Like you're not sleeping well, then you're bored, and you feel the hunger all the more. Then you eat again, right? And so this uh, green thing here, so the, the burning that happens at night, usually doesn't happen as much with late night sleeping, right? Because then here, you're gonna get another red spike, which will be from your midnight snack, and then body doesn't get a chance to metabolize. Body does not get uh, the chance to rest and digest and really heal and repair. So this is a very simple thing that I'd like to share with you when you're not eating and you allow your body to metabolize, you're actually allowing it to repair itself. You're allowing it to rest and repair. So when you're constantly eating, like your six meals a day and very short like intervals and you're eating all the time, then your body never gets to heal. And so you wonder, oh, not only am I getting fat, I'm actually experiencing so many things like I'm getting 
joint pains. I'm getting like um, diabetes, right? High cholesterol, my blood pressure shooting up. So all these like chronic disease things start to happen and you feel like all the more really like bad physically, right? Not only emotionally, but bad physically. It's this chronic inflammation state that's caused by a body that's not getting a chance to repair itself because you keep feeding it, right? And so every time you feed it, what happens? Insulin gets stimulated and yeah, it just has to work, continue to work and never get to repair itself, right? And all the more fat deposition starts to happen. So why we advocate for things like intermittent fasting, things like um, time-restricted eating, so meaning TRE, so I'm going to write it down here, TRE, time-restricted eating is the concept of eating in a restricted amount of time, normally during the circadian rhythm window. So the window of sleep, the daylight cycle. Circadian rhythm is your internal body clock. I've put a, a bit of an article there, like I posted a bit about this uh, circadian rhythm because I really want you to understand the importance of maintaining good sleep in regulating your health, not only your weight, right, but your overall health because it's the sleeping time when things repair themselves, right? When, when we get our metabolism to work better. So time-restricted eating, I highly promote it. You have to restrict the time, amount of time that you're eating. And this is where intermittent fasting comes in. Because if you look at this graph, so if you're restricting the time that you're eating, look at this. So earlier, you had this three spikes, right? This is your 12-hour eating window, eating three times a day. Now you have an eight-hour eating window, which is way less than the first one. And you get just a few spikes here, provided that you're not eating and snacking too much in between. And this is why we like to dispel the myth of having small, frequent meals. Yeah, it may be small, but every time you eat, and usually if it's carby, what's going to happen? Keep stimulating insulin, right? Insulin never, the body never gets a chance to rest. And so if you're eating in a shorter duration of time and also uh, smaller amounts, or not necessarily smaller, but lower carb content, then there's less insulin stimulation and you get more of the green part here, right? You see the green part where the body is in fat burning mode. The body is able to, to metabolize those excess fat, the excess storage. So just a very simple concept. If you keep bothering your body with dealing with food, it never gets into fat burning. But if you give it some rest, you don't eat so much, you go into intermittent fasting, low carb diet, you're giving the body a chance to rest and to be able to do its fat burning thing. Okay, so really, really important. And so what happens? So when we promote longer periods of fast, for example, something like OMAD, which I personally do, or things like what we call in this instance, the warrior, so warrior diet, the alternate day fasting. So this is usually more than 20 hours. So the OMAD falls into this category as well as things like a 36-hour fast, which is uh, alternate day. So 36 hours of fasting, then you eat the next day. So what normally happens is you get the one spike, right? It's the one insulin spike. The green part here will be more fat-burning mode. And so especially for people who need to lose weight, this is a very important concept to understand this is why you need to get into those longer types of fasts. It's because you need to be more of in a state of fat burning rather than fat making, right? You, you want to get rid of your fat. So does it make sense to, conti to continue feeding yourself like small frequent meals and stimulating your insulin? No, it does not 
make sense. So if now that you understand the science behind it, it's important to note, keep this figure in mind that if you just stimulate it the one time eating within the four or less hours, so that OMAD window, then you put your body in more of a fat burning mode. And in this way, you're gonna lose weight. And so the other important um, strategy that I normally will promote that goes hand in hand with um, intermittent fasting is of course the keto or low carb diet. So let's, let's go into low carb. So low carb usually should come before the intermittent fasting. It's harder to fast and get into the habit of fasting if you don't adopt the keto or low carb diet first. And the reason for that is you get hunger pangs you should get your body into a state of fat adaptation. So let me write that down, okay? These are very important concepts to learn. So get your body in a state of fat adaptation first through low carb or keto before you get into the intermittent fasting, especially the longer schedules. And again, the reason for that is because it's easier to sustain a fast. You'll get less side effects, right? Because if you go right into fasting and you have not allowed your body to adapt to fat, so fat adaptation means your body is used to burning fat for fuel. And you only be able to do that if you first transition into a low carb diet. So now let's look at low carb. So low carb, how do you define low carb? So there are three different categories. So we have ketogenic, which is under 20 grams. In this example, you see here a nice steak with broccoli, a little bit, I think these are egg medallions, and then you have some spinach or arugula and tomatoes. And look at the, the net carbs here, only six grams, right? It's only six grams. So definitely within our 20 grams per day. So this is ketogenic. Now you get the kind of middle range, which is moderate. So this is 20 to 50 grams per day. And you will see here a bit of, um, so just a note here, the first one ketogenic is mainly showing you above ground vegetables. So when it's above ground, it's less starchy, right? So when it's less starchy, less complex carbs, it's gonna be more fiber. And so the net grams of carbs will be much lower. So when you go into moderate, you can see here a combination. They've added some peppers, added some carrots. So carrots, even though carrots are, are healthy, it's good to note that it's still a uh, below ground vegetable. So all the below ground vegetable root crops, right? Um, even like our sweet potatoes, potatoes, all these below the ground types of vegetables with the carrots as well will will be more starchy so when they're more starchy they will stimulate insulin more compared to above ground vegetables so this is your mid moderate moderate carb diet now if we go to the last bit here so liberal liberal is 50 to 100 so 50 to 100 grams per day you can add a few more things here so here i think they added some um, yam. So this is again below ground. So the carrots and the yam uh, have added those additional, um, see, like sweet potatoes, right? Including the sweet potatoes, 37 grams. So you see that it really spiked. I mean, compare this uh, liberal, so 37 grams, with the ketogenic, which is just six grams. So it's a huge step up right? Even with just adding a few pieces of below ground vegetables, because they're very starchy, right? And same thing for things like grains, right? If you add rice, if you add especially white rice or any grain-based product. So things like, for example, bread, different kinds of baked goods, pastries, usually from, you know, bleached flour, they're really going to pull up that uh, net carb amount. So this is why it's important to 
to know the kinds of things that would give you a lower net carb. And so for someone who's wanting to lose weight, it is uh, advisable, you know, with the guide of um, preferably a physician who's knowledgeable in nutrition, rest uh, nutrition, intermittent fasting, low carb nutrition, it's important to guide them to ease into the ketogenic diet first, because if you're gonna stay liberal, so if you are needing to lose a lot of weight and you need to reverse your medical conditions right away, like for example, your diabetes is so bad, it's really uncontrolled, then it's gonna take you much longer, a much longer time to reverse that medical condition and to lose the weight if you stick to liberal carbs. And this is why a lot of people, they would go into, for example, uh, two meals a day, so T-MAD, two meals a day or OMAD, one meal a day, but then in their fueling window, so their feasting window, they eat a lot of carbs, it's going to put them even beyond liberal, right? If you think about it. So do you guys know how much carbs is in a piece of, of bread? So usually the multigrain variety, it can be anywhere from, I've seen like 15 all the way to 30. Imagine one piece, right? 30 grams of carbs. So immediately, that's going to put you right here beyond the liberal. And so does it make sense in terms of losing weight? It doesn't make sense that you're doing that fasting and then you're just really like offsetting it by eating the wrong things. And so it's really important for intermittent fasting to go hand in hand with low carb nutrition, especially when you need to lose weight and especially when you need to reverse medical conditions. It's just really... Um, you know, like common sense, right? Why would you do something and then do another thing that will reverse what you've done in the first place? Doesn't make sense. So you have to do the correct kind of uh, combination here to reach your goal of better health. So we advocate for combination of intermittent fasting and low carb. Usually, if you're just in the maintenance phase, you're okay to stay in moderate or liberal, especially if, like me, you work out a lot. Like, I regularly work out. I do moderate to intense workouts. And so, it is okay for me. And you, you can see I don't really have fat stores to lose. I don't have excess fat. So, usually, someone like me will need to be in moderate or liberal. Uh, but for people who are just really like starting out, you can ease into it by going into moderate later on ketogenic, right? To meet your uh, weight goals and your health goals. So now what can we eat, right? So what this, this is the question. So this is some um, from a uh, diet doctor. So this is kind of, um, and don't worry, because I'll be publishing my own um, my own list and giving it to you guys, but this is their general recommendation. So let's do, do these uh, food groups one by one. So what are the things that you need to eat? So the first thing would be in terms of like proteins, for example. So guys, I always talk to you about the importance of sticking to uh, whole foods, right? The more whole the food is, so the more close it is to its natural form, less processed, less addition of chemicals, the better it will be. Because in that case, you'll know that there was no added sugar or no added chemicals. So in this list, you see that for the meat, for example, so protein, there are a few different sources. So there's there are meat, fish and seafood, and there's eggs, right? So for meat, you can see here all the meats, right? You can basically have beef, you can have pork, lamb, you can have game and poultry. You can have things like deer, if you eat deer or bison, like here in our area, people hunt those things. So bison, deer, you can have even, even like rabbit if you live in Europe, right? So these are all meat. So rabbit is a game meat. Sometimes people eat like the wild boar. So those are like uh, meats right? So any meat that's unprocessed is pretty good. So you're okay to have um, liberal quantities. If you've seen my post about exercise and fasting, 
if you are strength training, you're allowed to have a little bit more protein. Usually it's in the range of between, uh, I'd say one to 1.5 gram per kilogram body weight of protein. And the next source for protein will be fish and seafood. So all kinds of fish and seafood are okay. So there's preference for fish like salmon, mackerel or herring. And why is that? Because they are sources of fat. They're fatty fish. Sardines can also be a source of fatty fish. So fish and seafood are okay as well for people who love seafood, right? You can have things here like lobster, right? Shellfish, all those other things from the sea. And eggs, this is kind of a staple in uh, keto diets, low carb diet, eggs, great source of protein and also fat. So for the natural fat, there are a few varieties here. So natural fat can be things like butter, olive oil, salmon is a natural, natural fat source. Again, other things like sardines, mackerel, these are natural fat. Avocado is natural fat. The oil of avocado, coconut oil, MCT oil, these are all naturally occurring fat that can, you can use safely. And also some synthetic ones like creams, cheese, right? Some cheeses are fatty. Chia seeds, if I haven't mentioned before. So these are natural fat. Again, we want to, um, it's okay occasionally to have things like lard, which comes from animal source, but if you can get it from plants, then that's also good. So moving on, what about the vegetables? So all kinds of above ground. So things like cabbages, asparagus, zucchini, eggplant, olives, spinach, mushrooms, cucumbers, lettuces, peppers, and tomatoes. And these are all great things to have in your pantry. So by the way, the thing to know about um, how do you um, make it easier for yourself to get into the low carb lifestyle, your shopping list, your pantry should actually be stocked and equipped with these things, right? And so this is the reason why I'm, I'm sharing with you this food list. So you get into the habit of restocking these things on a weekly basis. Because if you don't, then what ends up happening? You tend to turn to fast food, right? Especially when you're busy and you don't have the supplies, you tend to fast, tend to shift to fast food. And usually what are the things that are being sold as fast food? They're very carby things, sugary things. So it's important for you to, to have these things stocked in your pantry, in your refrigerator, put them on your grocery list so that it's easier to mix and match meals made from these whole foods. Whole foods, great protein sources, and great fat sources. So you see here for dairy products, you can have anything that you know is full fat. So things like yogurt, cream, um, cheeses again, cheese is also here. And they're just saying to be careful about any milk that says like reduced fat, right? Because it's not really, you want this, you want it to become as fatty as possible. So remember this graph here, don't be afraid of fat. Do not be afraid of fat because fat will not stimulate insulin as much as carbohydrates. For the longest time, a lot of people were afraid of fat because they, they're saying, oh, I have high cholesterol. So if I have high cholesterol, then I'm not going to eat fat because that will make my cholesterol even go, go higher. But the thing is, you have to understand that it doesn't work that way. In metabolism, the thing that will push your, your cholesterol um, metabolism to create more fat is actually the things that will drive insulin right? And so the things that will drive insulin are carbs, right? So do not be afraid of fat. And I've given you a list here of good fat so that you, you realize that they're not actually scary, right? They're not scary. So nuts and berries, again, nuts, great source of fat. So all the nuts, they're, they're okay to have just a little bit of caution with the peanuts. Uh, they're more calorie laden. So for people who are trying to really lose the weight, although we say do not count calories, but if you're really trying to lose so much weight, then best to stick to 
um, low calorie types of nuts. So macadamias, um, walnuts, almonds, those types of things. Okay, and berries. So raspberries, strawberries, blueberries. I know it's a bit hard if you're living in the Philippines to um, find these things. But the other like alternatives would be something like apple, for example. Um, a lot of fruits can be um, sources of really high sugar. So you have to be careful. If you're only eating OMAD, that's okay. It's okay for you to have those fruits. But just a caution, if you eat too much fruits, they're going to stimulate insulin as well. Okay. And finally, so the drinks, right? So the drinks, what can you drink when you are in keto or intermittent fasting? So anything without added sugar is okay. Water, sparkling water, black coffee, green tea, water with a bit of mint, water with a bit of lemon, water with a bit of ginger, all these things are okay. So it's really nice if you can really like just stop cold turkey drinking anything with added drinking anything with added sugar so things like pop you know cola all these things you really just have to like quit cold turkey right because they're just going to be pure insulin stimulants they're usually made up of simple sugar so the spike in insulin will be just instant and empty calories right they're empty calories and finally so we have here so again don't worry i'll be giving you a copy of of this but i'll be editing it to be more inclusive more inclusive and to include some like food that we can find in the philippines and so the things to avoid again sugar so soft drinks candy juice sport drinks chocolate cakes you know just a note chocolate if you are eating like a limited amount of dark chocolate it is a good source of fat so that that's okay but you have to really like eat it in moderation and here are all your big goods so buns and pastries and cakes and here's a big thing here breakfast cereal a lot of people think that when they eat oh i eat, eat like shreddies for breakfast i eat um you know like a multi-grain uh whatever but then they fail to read the label and what most food manufacturers do is they put a lot of sugar to make it palatable right because if you compare it to the other sweet cereals it's not going to be as tasty so they will put some like hidden sugar there and you still think that you're eating healthy you're, you're thinking oh i'm eating healthy because i'm eating multi-grain but in reality the grain itself is an insulin stimulant and the added sugar is an insulin stimulant right so be careful of these breakfast cereals and again guys just remember you may not even need to eat breakfast right in our language in low carbon intermittent fasting breaking the fast means it doesn't have to be the morning you can be breaking your fast for example you're going omad so one meal a day your breaking the fast can happen at like say 5 p.m. Like me, most of the time I'm in OMAD. So my breakfast is actually around 5 p.m. So that's the time I'm eating. Usually my 23rd hour of fast, I'm gonna eat. So that's my breakfast. It, it doesn't have to be morning time, okay? So in reality, you're not needing these cereals. You won't need the cereals. And in that way, you'll save money. And here again, the artificial sweeteners. Why don't we like you to still use artificial sweeteners? It's because it's going to keep you in the loop of sugar addiction. Although it's zero calories, what happens there is you continue to have that craving for sweetness. And so you never really get out of the um, addiction cycle for sugar. And we're trying to break that cycle by going low carb, right? And intermittent fasting. So if you're kind of cheating, and using artificial sweeteners, again, it defeats the purpose. And here, again, the starches are here. Um, you've, I've mentioned all of those, bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, french fries, potato chips, porridge. That's why um, lugao is not essential, okay? In our world of low-carbon intermittent fasting, lugao is not essential. So 
here and moderate amounts of root vegetables as we've talked about because they're very starchy, right? And then margarine. So margarine, why are we not advocating for it? Because these are very highly processed. So remember guys, the farther away it is from the natural form, the more processes like chemicals um, and processes it has to go through, the worse it is for your health. So just in general, avoid very highly processed food. And then of course you have beer, which is a source of carbs and calories. And here the fruit, we talked about um, the more natural it is, the better. Dried fruit can have more carbs, right? Because it's more concentrated sugar. Now, what they're saying here is coconut, citrus, and melon contain fewer carbs than, for example, bananas and grapes. So not all fruit are created equal. So for in the case of um, people living in the Philippines, you can certainly have coconut and some citrus fruits may be, you know, the landan as long as you don't have too much, right? It, it should be fine. But just caution if you're really like trying to lose weight. So that's it for the things to avoid, right? And so there's this list, but I'm going to give you a, a more detailed list than this because we need to know um, the, the other food groups that we can eat but should be taken, you know, like in moderate amounts, right? And so just to give you um, a summary, so the low-carb intermittent lifestyle um, combo should be started by going low carb first. So now that you know what kinds of food are low carb, then, um, and, and if you're scared, you don't really, you know, like know how to um, properly like combine them, then please join our community. So we have the Level Up uh, Wellness community in Facebook. So Level Up Wellness, just um, give me a moment. I'm going to type it. So look for Level Up Wellness Community. And what you'll find there uh, are valuable resources. People, What people are eating when they are going on a low-carb diet, how, how long people are fasting. So it's an excellent resource because it's going to give you an idea about combos. A lot of people are scared of doing low carb because they think that they won't be able to sustain it because the food will be very bland and boring because in their minds, they think that um, low carb nutrition is similar to caloric restriction, which is limiting the amount of calories, which can be really very bland and really boring. Some people eat like one piece of lettuce leaf or apple, but low carb is completely um not like that, it's the opposite. It can be really fun because it is usually high in fat and high protein. So your favorite things, right? So bacon and sausages, um, keep them in moderation if they're processed. If they're homemade, that's okay. And you know things like ham, pork, right? Like chicken, beef, you can eat all of those. You can have your seafood, right? And then you can have your fats, you can have creams, you can have your butter things that are very satisfying, taste really great. And you'll see that in the food postings in the group, how satisfying the meals look like, not only look like, but actually taste, right? Very satisfying. It will help you not feel hungry so much. And it's very sustainable that way. So join our group. So just look for Level Up Wellness Community and we'll warmly welcome you. And so after you've started your low carb diet, so start maybe if you're completely brand new, start with low carb for a week, okay? Low carb for a week, try to start maybe uh, moderate low carb. So go start with moderate low carb first. So that's your 20 to 50 grams, like this plate here, for example, right? Does that look boring to you? It doesn't look boring to me. I have a steak here. And you can eat that with a little bit of cheese and butter. And the net carbs will still be low, right? Because it's just fat. So start with moderate and then work your way to keto. And then once your body gets used, get, gets used to keto, then you can start your fasting. So you can start with something like this, an eight-hour eating window, 16-8. This is more of the time-restricted eating. So after the one week of your low carb, go to your um, 
eight hour eating window, 16 8, and eventually you can transition to OMAD, right? OMAD, more than 20 hours of fasting. And later on, if you need further guidance with this, then you can do longer extended fasts, but you will need guidance from someone who has proper education in um, longer fasts. So if you think that you may need more help with um, creating a plan or you, if you want to follow a program, stay tuned. We're also releasing our wellness program. It'll have um, the diet there, the fasting regimens, and also some exercises and something to help you with stress reduction and also um, a more like holistic way of living. So stay tuned for that. And so I'm going to end here. So hopefully I, I won't be able to read all the comments, but uh, what I'll do is our VAs will look at all the uh, comments here and we'll um, pull the questions. And that's the questions will be what I'll discuss in the next live broadcast. So by the way, if you're a follower of FSM, we do have um, live broadcast happening tomorrow. So it's gonna be 9 p.m or in the Philippines, it's going to be 9 p.m. Friday, so today. Here in Canada, U.S., it's going to be tomorrow morning. So I have a really special guest. Okay, so join us. All right, so we'll pull all your questions, and next time we will address each of them. Okay, so please stay tuned, join our community, and be inspired to level up in your wellness. Okay, bye for now, everyone.